right in. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Ledwell and this is The Inspiration Show. Today on the show I have a very good friend of mine and we're going to be talking about uh, how we don't want to really be wasting time in life and focusing on regrets, um, how that really affects our lives and, um, and how we can rise above that. But before I introduce my special guests, I just want to remind you that if you are watching this show live on Facebook or a little bit later on on our YouTube channel, don't forget to click on the link below this video after the show is over so you can take my 30 second quiz so we can figure out what's holding you back from success. So please let me introduce my good friend, Christine Hassler. How are you, Christine? I'm doing great. I'm so, I'm always happy to have a chat with you, Natalie. I know. And you're coming to us from Kuala Lumpur in uh, Malaysia at the moment. So yes, yes. Just woke up, <laughs> whipped on a little mascara and here I am. Luckily I'm a morning person, so I have lots of energy. <laughs> yeah, I know. it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Now, um, obviously we are really good friends, but there'll be some people in our community, but that may not be familiar with you. So, so let's tell us a little bit about your story and how you got into doing what you do right now. Yes. Well, so what I do right now is I'm a master coach, a best-selling author, keynote speaker, retreat facilitator, podcast host, and most recently TV host. But this none of this was planned at all. I, I came out to Los Angeles actually when I was not even 21 years old, graduated from college early, fueled by massive insecurity. So Los Angeles is the perfect city to go <laughs> with massive insecurity and if you've got something to prove. And I did. I felt you know, my growing up, I, I didn't feel a sense of belonging. I was teased and I compensated for it by being a, an extreme overachiever, which is very effective on the external line of life. So that overachiever moved me out to Hollywood and I thought, you know, if I can make it in Hollywood, not in front of the camera, I couldn't handle that much rejection, but if I could make it in Hollywood as a producer or an agent or something, then I'd like finally be important. Plus, I always really loved TV and, and Hollywood. and. And I worked my way up, and I, I was the worked my way up to being an agent. I was an agent at 25, which is incredibly young to be an agent. But I was I was a hustler, and when you have that much drive, aka insecurity, <laughs> you will stop at nothing to be successful. So there I am, 25 years old, in this fancy office, uh, going to the Oscars and the Golden Globes, and hanging out with celebrities, and making tons of money, and, and assistant financiers my phone for me, and I'm still not happy. I remember, Natalie, one New Year's Eve, I was sitting next to George Clooney at a very small dinner party, and I was like, I'm sitting next to George Clooney, and I'm still miserable. Like, I am. I have a problem, I have a significant problem. So to make a long story a little bit shorter, I thought the solution was quitting my job. So I ended up resigning from my job, which threw me into even more of a depression. And I had been struggling and medicated for depression since I was 11. I was put on Prozac at 11. And then I went into tons of debt because I tried to keep up my lifestyle without my paycheck. And then I got disowned by my family and made a decision they didn't like. Then I got diagnosed with even more health stuff. And then my fiance dumped me six months before my wedding. So I know that people watching or listening have been through worse, but for me at that moment, at about 26 years old, that was my rock bottom, where everything I clung to for safety, security, identity was taken, and I was thrown into massive uncertainty. And I think all of us can relate to when we're thrown into massive uncertainty. All our coping devices flare up. It's incredibly uncomfortable, and we just want to be out of it. So that was my first major, 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 what I call now an expectation hangover. Mm. Things did not go according to plan. Life threw me some unexpected curveballs, and all I wanted to do was get out of it. But that also was the best moment of my life because I started to have some insights about how the fact the common denominator and all those things was me. So wait a second, if I created all those things, maybe I can create something different. And because I was so lost and because my old overachieving ways weren't solving the problem, like my old ways of coping weren't working, I could either keep numbing myself with alcohol or TV or working or whatever, or I could start to look at something else. And that is when I became obsessed with personal growth. I had already had a coach at the time, but I wasn't really listening to her. She was telling me a lot of things and I was like, yeah, 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 that's too hard. But that moment was the pivot point for me when I'm like, I want to understand human beings myself first. That led to writing my first book. That led to people telling me I should be a coach. That led to getting trained as a coach. That led to speaking and writing and da 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 da. So it was that rock bottom moment that led to what I do now. Yeah. So I know your previous book was Expectation Hangover. What was the main, um, like, what is an expectation hangover? What was the main theme of that book? Yeah. So it's when one of three things happen a desired result um, isn't achieved, you, things don't go according to plan, mm -hmm. or things do go according to plan, like you get that great job 
but wait a second, you're still not happy. Or you find they're in a relationship and that void that you were hoping that person fills isn't, isn't filled. Or life just throws you an unexpected curveball. You get dumped, you get diagnosed with an illness, you get laid off. And I use the word hangover because everybody, most everybody, can relate to being hungover from something and going, oh my gosh, this is awful. My head is spinning, I regret something, I have no motivation, and I just want to be out of it. An expectation hangover is similar, but it lasts longer until we do something about it. Our head is spinning in confusion. We definitely have a sense of regret. Our, we've lost our mojo a bit, and, and we, it's so uncomfortable because there's so much uncertainty and such a feeling of failure or I messed up or there's some – it triggers all our – you know, Natalie, as you know, every human being at a core level has this crazy misunderstanding that I'm not enough or I'm not lovable or something's wrong with me or I'm broken in some way. And part of our human experience is to realize that that's just a bunch of baloney. But an expectation hangover is wonderful in that it really activates all of that. So it gives us the opportunity to look at it. And, and why I became so passionate about disappointment is not because I want people to be in pain or suffer. I want to help people leverage their suffering because that's what I did. I really looked at my suffering. I looked at those moments of expectation hangover. And I asked, what am I learning versus why is this happening to me? And every expectation hangover usually triggers something from our past that we need to look at. And we've been creating kind of the same thing over and over and over, but it takes a massive expectation hangover to like kind of blow it all up and have us really go, okay, I need to look within and I need to shift from awareness to integration and maybe I need to heal some things. Mm -hmm. So that's really what, what it means and, and why I, I get excited when people have them because I'm like, I know it sucks right now, but believe me, if you leverage this, you're going to be, you're going to be uncovering and healing something amazing. Yeah, because that's the thing. I, I find that we we do like all these coping mechanisms and things that we do just to avoid disappointment. Whereas if we were just to go through the uncomfortableness of that for a moment, it exactly. gives us the opportunity to take stock and go, is this we're really where I want to be or why is this happening or what is the lesson I need to learn here? Exactly. I call it the avoidance trap that people fall mm. into. You know, as a coach, people come and tell me what they want but they spend way more time avoiding what they don't want, way more time and energy and mental thinking about what they don't want. You know, They want a relationship, but their avoidance trap is rejection, so they don't put themselves out there. You know, They want to start their new business or release their creativity, but maybe their avoidance trap is like people-pleasing. So they're so afraid to put it out there and have someone be upset or set boundaries with someone. So we've got to get out of our avoidance trap, which is uncomfortable, but that's – that's the only place that true change actually happens. If we wait until we're comfortable we ha or we have certainty, then we're never, we're never vulnerable. And I was listening to a Brene Brown interview yesterday, and I just love her. Brene Brown writes, she, she's a researcher. She studies on shame and vulnerability. And she was talking about how you can't have courage without vulnerability. Mm. Like true courage requires vulnerability because the, the definition of vulnerability, I can't remember exactly, but I know it involved uncertainty and emotional exposure. And I can't think of anything I've ever done that's been courageous that didn't have vulnerability in it. Absolutely. So we have to allow ourselves to be in that. Yeah. Um, so how do we do make this shift? Like I know we're talking about avoiding disappointment and all those coping mechanisms. Yeah. Mechanism. Why is your focus now on regret? Is this what you find is coming a lot, up a lot with the people that you're working with? Yeah, they go hand in hand because yeah. unprocessed expectation hangovers and disappointment make people live even safer. Hmm. And so... They stop taking risks. They, they, they shrink their life. They have tunnel vision. Their control devices are even heightened. They don't want to let go of the steering wheel because all that unprocessed disappointment and seen as something bad or seeing themselves as failures or whatever just makes them cling to certainty even more. And when we do that, we, like I said, we become so tunnel vision and we become so risk avoidant that you know, we never really live into our full potential. We never quit that job that's sucking our soul. We never get out of that relationship that's good enough, but we know like is not good for either one of us. We never like move to that city we want to move to. We never write that book we're dreaming about. And what I've seen, especially, you know, I started off coaching people in their 20s. Those were my first two books. And now I coach people all the way up to my oldest clients in her 60s. And especially when I'm coaching people in their 50s and 60s, one thing that always comes up is the shoulda, coulda, would us. Mm -hmm. So what if I had went for that? And it's so painful, Natalie, because with regret, we, we just can't turn back the clock. We can't get back time. 
And so I am such like an advocate for people going for it, for getting, for taking that risk, for getting out of that comfort zone, for having some expectation hangovers, because that's where you learn and that's where you grow. And that's where you can go on your deathbed. You know what? Not everything was successful and how many people would define successful, but at least I know I did it. At least I know I went for it. At least I know I didn't have regrets. So I feel like I lived a full life. So that's why. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you have a, a masterclass coming up soon. Tell us a yes. little bit like the structure of that. Are you giving people like tips and tools that they can actually use and apply to yes. be able to get to avoid yes. this? Yeah. Yes. Because I know people um, consciously are going, yeah, I want to live life with no regrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get it. But when the opportunities show up, what do you do? Yeah. Or when it when the they, option. Yeah. 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 When you're when you're at a crossroads, what do you choose? And so in in the No Regrets Masterclass, I'm gonna be teaching a few things. The number one thing is why you feel stuck. Like why you get stuck up at that point where you can't take the risk or why you feel unsatisfied. And we're gonna be talking about how only five percent of behavior is consciously driven. Like there's so much of our behavior and our thoughts and our actions that's unconsciously driven. So I'm going to be talking about how you can get more clarity about your unconscious programming and like the story that you tell yourself that you may be aware of to a degree, but we're going to bring it up even further and you're going to discover something that I call your compensatory strategy that's driving most of your behavior that you're really good at, but is it good for you? And if you keep using your compensatory strategy, you're going to have regrets. Mm -hmm. So we're going to uncover that and we're going to transform it. And I'm also going to teach how to transform your struggles into your superpowers. So all of these things that we've, we've talked about in terms of disappointment, how you really, really find your superpowers within those moments. And then the final thing is identifying your purpose and taking action towards it because that's another pain point I see and so many people come to me for coaching or retreats is, why am I here? What am I here for? And that's a really important question. And I think to, to live a fulfilled, fulfilled life and to get unstuck, we have to feel like we have meaning. You know, Tony Robbins talks about meaning and contribution. So I have a pretty uh, easy way, a clear and easy way to help you identify that because um, I think people think figuring out your purpose has to be this complex, long thing, and it's really not. No. No, I know. I'm actually uh, writing a new book at the moment doing a lot of research on the female midlife crisis. Mm. Which, uh, is very similar to the male midlife crisis where we're both asking ourselves the question, like, is my life meaningful? Yeah. You know, am I making a contribution? We just, women and men tend to deal with it differently. Yeah. You know, we, we, we have different ways of being able to, to move through it. But we, we get to this point where we're like, we really want a life of meaning. And how, what is that? Especially when you go, you, you seem, we all seem to have this yearning. It's like, what, you know, what, what can I do to make a bigger contribution? Yeah. So I think it's a very timely message that you have right now. So with the masterclass, is it free? What's yes. tell us the story? Totally free masterclass. If you sign up for it, you can join me live um, and interact with me live, or you can watch the replay. The replay will be up for several days. So either way, yes. Great. So uh, we have a, a banner to the side or a link underneath this video that you can click on so you can go through and register for Christine's Masterclass. And I highly recommend it. She, as you can tell, she's been a wealth of information today and uh, she is an amazing coach and she has awesome information for you. So make sure that you click on that and register for that Masterclass. Darling, thank you so much for joining me today. It's always a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I love being on the Inspiration Show. <laughs> I know. When we talk to each other all the time, but like for us to be able to share our conversation love is, is fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me and hello to everyone that I'm new to and to those of you that I've interacted with before. Hello again, and and just I love I love your tribe, Natalie. It's all people that that know that we're conscious creators of our life, Absolutely. and that's so exciting that we're living in a time where like we know that. Yeah, awesome. So guys, please click on the link to go through and register for that masterclass and share this video. You can do that by clicking the Facebook and the Twitter share buttons on this page, and then after you do that, click on the link to take our thirty second quiz so we can figure out what's holding you back from success. Until next time, remember to live large, choose courageously and love without limits. We'll see you soon.